Good morning, everybody. This is Miss Ingram here, and I just want to welcome you to Distance Learning 2020. Um, this is a new and exciting time, and we are going to make it through together um, while well, we work in this partnership to educate my students and your children. And so here I want to do a quick video uh, just to help you get started if you're having trouble getting into our Google Classroom. And I want to show you how to get logged into our unique learning system curriculum where you will find all of your students' work and assignments. Um, so I am doing this from a computer, uh, but you can also do it from a phone or a tablet uh, by downloading the Google Classroom app. But since I'm on a computer, I'm going to go to my Google Chrome and I am going to choose my account to log in. I um, am borrowing Elizabeth this morning. And you're going to use her, the student's Mobile County uh, school issued email address. You'll notice that when you're trying to log into Google and you put that email address in, it then pops up Mobile County and you've got to re-enter it or choose that student email um, and put in that password, which is capital first initial, lowercase second initial, and the eight digit birthday. And we're going to sign in. So Elizabeth has already joined these classrooms, so this is how they show up. You if you're needing to join another classroom, um, say if she's wanting to add PE or music therapy, um, you just click the plus button and you can put in any class code that you've received. Um, for some of you, if it's the first time you're logging into my classroom, you should simply see Miss Ingram's class across the top with um, a button to either join, uh, to join the class because I sent an invite through the email. So I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, my classroom by clicking. Okay, here we go. So you'll see our field trip picture there. Under classwork, you'll see weekly um, assignments, just kind of a guide uh, telling you like what the focus is for like the week. Um, for math, we're going to focus on one skill each week, and as the weeks progress, the activities from the previous weeks will remain just for continued practice. And reading, I, I just listed the different lessons for each day, which you'll see they're pretty repetitive right now. Um, I have it set that you will see the same activities for three days at a time before anything changes. So if your student's not having a good day, if you have appointments or therapy appointments, if you have other children in your home that you're trying to work with, um, I do not want you to feel the pressure to have to go in and complete all the activities every day. Um, I do. We are kind of taking attendance through record of y'all logging into Google Classroom and logging into at least one activity on Unique. So if possible, you know, try to get in and at least listen to the story each day, uh, but do not feel pressure to complete every activity every day. So here on the stream, uh, after the welcome message, you'll see this link. Um, and just click on that and it's going to take you straight to our class's unique learning login. And so you should find your student here, click on their name, and then enter their password. And okay, there we go. So right now I don't have anything under positivity, so don't worry about that. L3 skills, uh, this is not required, but if your student has some extra time, you want to give them something to do, um, I have assigned a few fun games in there for students to play, but that is completely optional. 
Our main focus is going to be this orange snowflake here, and that's our curriculum. So when you click on that, it's going to take you right here to your child's activities. And these are the lessons that are assigned for today. So we have four reading activities and one math lesson that's assigned. So um, I'm going to take you in to just kind of show you what these first activities look like. So here we've got our phonics. Um, everything that you click on, it will read it to you. So if I click on this O, it will read it to you. This arrow button is how you can move the page up, you can move it down, over, you can zoom in, uh, you can zoom out. This will show you the whole page at one time. This will kind of zoom it in for you if you're wanting um, maybe to limit the number of choices or items that your child sees at one time. Uh, again, if you're doing this on a phone or an iPad, then it'll be completely touch interactive like our smart board at school, which is great for most everybody. If you are on a laptop, you will need to use the mouse or touchpad. You can go page to page by clicking the arrow button. The go button will also let you skip to other uh, pages or activities within this lesson. So right now we're under the letter cards, but then you can also choose picture word cards or just picture cards without the words. So I can jump over here and we can Ocean. look at some of our vocabulary words. Uh, it's good to get familiar with these because in an upcoming lesson students will have to choose the picture cards that match a letter card. Uh, so they'll have an O card and they'll need to select which picture um, match that. This globe over here is a very important button. This is how you're going to go back to the home screen to go back in another activity. And you can click this print button if you want a paper copy of any of the pages for your student to do. Um, and that's really all y'all probably need to worry about right now. So I'm going to go back home and I'm going to go into the high frequency words. So if I go to this go button I'm going to see there's list one, list two, and list three. So pay attention to the um, lesson assignments to see what list we're working on. Uh, but I can go ahead and tell you that for the first two weeks we're just going to be focusing on list one which is six sight words. So when you're going through this with your student, Much. click on it, let them hear the word, let them try to repeat the word, uh, spell the word together, have them identify what letter that starts with. So if school, if we were putting it up on our word wall, you know, I'd say, well, what letter does it start with? Start with M. Okay, let's find M on our word wall. And we would go and tape that word um, underneath M. And so you can scroll through. If you're just going from page to page, know that it will take you past six words. Uh, so you might want to be counting to make sure you don't do more than you have to do at first. I'm going to go back home. And here's our story vocabulary for our first book. Um, we've got bank, budget, and again, bank. these will read the word to you if you click on it. Some of these, like budget, are going to be new words for our students, but bank and earning and having enough money, uh, these are terms we've been talking about. We've had a class store. The students have had their banks, and they are used to earning money in class and then getting to go and make a deposit into their bank. And then when it's time to go shopping in the class store, we have to count our money to see if we have enough or if we need to save our money uh, to save it up for something else we want. So those are the vocabulary words that they're going to need to recognize um, for our story. And over here we have story one that we'll be focusing on for the first two weeks. And I like to go to the full page view. So to earn money. click on our title. Can identify our author who 
uh, writes the story for us. Um, we can talk about the cover page. You know, who do you see? They see some boys and some girls. How many of each? What color clothing are they making? Um, or <laughs> what color clothing are they wearing? Um, see if they can go ahead and identify uh, the money up there in the pictures. And then click it. wants to buy a new basketball. It costs money. Kale needs to earn money. Okay. So maybe have them uh, point to that basketball for you. Um, ask them, well, what does he want to buy? He wants to buy a basketball. What does he need to buy that basketball? He needs money. Kale can work to earn money. Kale dries dishes. So again, just keep talking about these pages and what are they doing? Is there any objects that they can identify matching some vocabulary terms um, to some actual real life objects? And just continue to do that throughout the story. And everything that you do, every time something is clicked um, on one of these activities for it to be read, um, or a picture is clicked, uh, it is recording all of that information for me. Um, I'm able to pull a report that says what activities did the student work on, what day, what time, did they complete all the questions, did they just, you know, did you just look at four of the book story pages, um, did they answer all five of the questions, how many did they get right, um, and then each day it will reset and so I can see how often, how much y'all are doing and how they're improving. And I do expect that in the first couple of days when y'all are practicing that um, it's probably going to show me you know, 100% accuracy because you're teaching and you're modeling for them. And then as we get towards the end of working through these activities and I say, hey guys, this is an assessment day, then I would like to see what they do. <laughs> but in the beginning, I definitely want you teaching them and showing them the correct responses. Here's our math activity. So again, everything on here, it will read it for you. Emily has two trash bags. Count two trash bags. One, One two. two. Uh, I've already been in here once and answered this question. But I can drag a response off and reset it. So when we click on this, um, for this student, she is matching that number. If we drag... You don't have to, uh, if we click that wrong number, oops, we got it wrong, and you can simply drag it away, parents, and give them another chance to find that correct answer. Uh, we are, we have been working on more and less, so please go over this with your student, um, asking them which one has more, which one has less. And there are several pages that y'all can work through Keep working. Um, throughout. More to do. Keep, I am done. Uh, we can skip over to different ones. You can just keep going through the pages each day. You can skip. When you go to these numbers since, how many? Um, this is what we'll be using for our assessment later in the week, but feel free to go in and practice these. Uh, you'll see that the numbers are not already there for them to match, but they're going to need to count. One, two, three, four, five. And then find that number that matches. You can limit the number of choices by, in this full screen, you can click the blue box and you can drag it down and eliminate some of the choices. You can also come over here and go to the wider page view. 
well, that reset for me. Let's just zoom in. And now I've made it bigger and I've also eliminated some of those answer choices for students who may be distracted by all 10. Uh, this is one of those activities that if you were to go to print, Uh, you could print it and they could they could write on it. Um, you could print it and they could touch it. So again, I'm just going to go home. I'm done working in that for today. In order to get logged out of the program for the day, uh, we have what we call a ghost button down here in the bottom. It's really hard to see until you get your arrow right over it and it turns into a little hand. It's a little shadow box, a ghost box down here. And that is how you actually get logged out. And you're back to our welcome screen. And I can close this out. And here I am back in the Google Classroom. Um, if you scroll down on our home page, um, I have a few other links here to some websites and uh, a letter tracing app. If you're looking for some fun things um, to keep your student busy, these are some additional great resources. Don't forget about all your other classes, uh, your speech, class, your adaptive PE, your music therapy. Um, I sent out links to our Ms. Walker, the librarian, Ms. Brenton PE. They've all created Google Classrooms and are uploading activities each week. Um, those activities are not graded. Um, they are optional, but we hope you will take advantage of those resources. The only grades this quarter will be math and reading, so that will be our unique learning program. Those will be the grades. If you have any questions or need help getting logged in or aren't sure what to do in one of the lessons, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I am here for you guys and uh, happy learning and I hope you guys have a great week. Bye!